Hey lovely people, I'm Angeline and welcome back. Today I'm doing something that's three years late, a bit of a reaction video to the film Crazy Rich Asians. Of course I'll be cooking as well and making something from the movie that I haven't made before and that's Square Lapis, a nine layered steamed cake that's really popular in Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore and certainly one of my childhood favorites. The dish is from the dinner party scene where Rachel meets Nick's mum for the very first time. Let's take a look. Do you want to head in? Actually, I wanted to bring her over to my mum first. Come on. I recently listened to an interview with John Chu, who directs the film. And he talks about that moment you just watched when Nick Young comes out of his mansion dressed in an all-white suit. Chu was watching the film with his brother, and when that scene played, he noticed that his brother started to cry. So he asked him, what's going on? And his brother says, I've never seen an Asian man represented like this before, and growing up, I never thought I would. You just feel so ugly or underappreciated, and you just feel so othered. As I listened to this interview, I realized that this is an example of why this film has been so impactful for Asian male representation. Of course it doesn't represent all Asians, not that it should, but something that it does so well is function as a love letter to Asians that grew up in the West. Asians like me. And the thing about this experience has been feeling like I'm not ever fully Australian and I know that I'm not what you think of when you think Australian. On the surface, Crazy Rich Asians is a fun love story about an Asian American woman that dates Singapore's richest bachelor. But the more important statement it's making is that Asians can be the stars of their own stories, that yes, they can play the leading man or the leading woman. In this film, we finally see Asians represented as nuanced characters that are much more interesting and uplifting than crappy old stereotypes of the math geek the nail salon operator, the grocery store owner with bad English. My list of cringy Asian stereotypes is so much longer than this, but you get the picture. The problem with these stereotypes is that they're never empowering or aspirational. So that's why the simple act of visiting my local cinema to watch an English speaking, all Asian cast featured in a Hollywood produced film was so surreal. It was something I'd never experienced before, and I loved it. What immediately stood out was how Asian males were being presented. Hallelujah, there were plenty of good-looking, desirable men in this film. Desirable Asian males? If you grew up in the West, you'd be excused for not knowing that they existed, but they do. When the film finished, I needed to unpack it. What just happened here? My husband and I rushed to the nearest cafe to talk about it. We were buzzed, so buzzed. This was a moment in cinema. And as two Asians that grew up in Australia, it felt like our moment in cinema. Now you might find this a really bizarre reaction, but the way I'd explain it is, imagined you spend your whole life never seeing anyone that looks like you on the TV or in the movies, nobody cool. And then one day you go see a film where everyone not only looks like you, but they sound like you too. It's mind blowing. And I would say that Asian males cop it way worse than Asian females on the topic of media visibility and desirability. Asian men have been invisible for far too long. So I'm going to keep voting with my wallet and my eyeballs to support more diverse content. And that's why I love this film. It's a love letter to Asians who grew up in the West, especially my Asian brothers, that we see you, we hear you, and you're worthy of the limelight. 
But my closing message is for everyone, regardless of your background. Don't wait for your crazy rich Asian moment. It may never come. If you don't see yourself in the media that surrounds you, if you don't hear stories that represent you, I hope you can find a way to change that, whether it's making content or supporting content that you want to see. And that's the same challenge I've set for myself, to keep going with this creative little side project to make these cooking, eating and talking videos. Because hopefully my stories connect with somebody out there. And if not, there's always the food. See you next time.